First of all, you can't reverse a cavity. You can reverse demineralization within the enamel before it gets deeper into the tooth. So first, let me explain how a tooth works. I went ahead and drew this out beforehand because it would have taken forever. But anyway, here is a tooth. This pink stuff represents the gums and this like little hashed bluish greenish color um, represents bone. And here's a tooth with a couple of different layers. So the outer layer here is called enamel. I don't know why I said it like you guys are kindergartners. It's called enamel. This white stuff all around. Side note, the stuff that's underneath the gum and inside the bone, it is also the outer layer of a tooth, but it's actually called cementum. Again, it's also the outer layer. It's a little bit softer than enamel, so if you get cavities in this area, they spread faster. How you get cavities in that area is if you get gum recession and some bone loss exposing the cementum. The next layer into the tooth, this yellow part here, is called the dentin, okay? So keep that in mind. And then this central part here, this red, strategically colored red, is the pulp chamber slash the nerve. So basically what keeps the tooth vital. So now that you understand a tooth, let me explain how a cavity works. First of all, what a cavity is, everybody has bacteria in their mouth and some of the bacteria is not good for you. It eats whatever you eat, mainly carbohydrates, simple carbs, um, and then it poops acid on your teeth. And if that acid is not removed on a regular basis, it starts to eat away at the tooth. Now, another side note here, candy is not the only stuff that can cause a cavity. That bacteria that poops acid on your teeth eats not just sugars, but any sort of simple carbs. So chips, rice, potatoes, crackers, okay? Any simple carbs, cereal even. It doesn't just take candy, in case you're wondering why you don't eat candy but you still get cavities. Anyway, so bacteria poops acid and it starts to eat away at the tooth. So when it starts to eat away at the enamel here, the process is called demineralization. Let me write that down for you. d me neural there it is. It's also called incipient caries. So sometimes if you go to a dentist and they're like, mm, let's just keep an eye on that because that's incipient caries. So what happens here is the enamel is such a hard structure that it just starts to demineralize as the acid is eating away at it. And at this stage, you do have a chance to remineralize the tooth by brushing off or flossing out the acid and keeping your teeth clean on a regular basis. And over time, that area actually starts to re-solidify and does not progress into an, a full-blown cavity. Now, if you don't clean this off, the cavity starts getting bigger and bigger and eventually it reaches into the dentin. The dentin is much softer than the enamel and once a cavity gets in there, it starts to just blow up in there, okay? And there is nothing you can do at that point to reverse that process. Whew, I haven't talked this much in a while. I'm all alone at home, guys, all the time, so I just think to myself instead of talking out loud. Anyway, random alert. So you understand how a tooth works and how a cavity works. So if you're not sure where this is all going at this point, I'm just gonna tell you point blank that all those natural remedies, just swishing them in your mouth, is not going to reverse that demineralization process. Don't get me wrong, those ingredients have some great qualities, antiseptic, um, antibacterial, microbial, um, pain relief with the clove, I, I get all that. But what needs to happen here in order for the demineralization to reverse is you need to wipe it off by brushing or flossing your teeth on a regular basis to stop that process from continuing. So a simple analogy for, for this idea of just swishing to get rid of a cavity with anything really is just think of like washing dishes and all you're doing is just running the dishes under soapy hot water. Just running them under that soapy hot water 
is not gonna get all the dirt off. You need to actually take a sponge, right, and scrub it down and then continue rinsing it off with the soapy water to remove all the dirt. So it's the same concept on our teeth. We have a layer of biofilm on our teeth. Hey guys, I'm editing here and I just wanted to clarify, it's not the biofilm that we're trying to remove, it's that plaque um, building up, which eventually turns into a cavity or tartar, but that's another episode. Anyway, not biofilm, plaque that can only be removed with manual wiping off with brush bristles or floss in between the teeth where the brush does not reach. So if you want to rinse with all those natural products, go ahead. But if you're trying to prevent cavities and reverse any areas of demineralization, you gotta brush and floss. That's just the way it is. I personally have had a few areas of demineralization in between my teeth and along the gum line back when I was a kid. I've had a few fillings already at that time and when the dentist said you have a few small cavities here that we need to watch and might need to do some fillings on there, I was like no, no more fillings, no more cavities. That's when I started brushing and flossing thoroughly, regularly, consistently and over the years, it didn't happen overnight, but over the years those small shadow areas in between my teeth on the x-rays actually disappeared because the tooth remineralized, that enamel remineralized over time. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. God bless. Take care of your teeth.